welcome to Make Change Fun and Easy with your happiness expert, Samia Bano. This is the podcast to help change makers, coaches, trainers, and healers break your chains of fear so you can create the impact and income you desire with fun and ease. Please make sure you subscribe to enjoy every episode. This podcast is sponsored by the Happiness 101 program. Hello, Shalom, Shalom, Namaste, Sashrikal, Aloha, Hola, Ciao, Bonjour, Buna, and Privet. It's really, really good to be with you again, and I know you'll be so happy you've joined us today because we have a very special guest, and our guest today is Spencer Jones, who is the Prince of Positivity. I'm so excited to have you with us, Spencer. Welcome. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for having me here, Samia. It's such an honor. I love you, your energy, everything you do. I'm just so excited to share this time and energy with you and everybody here. Yay. All right, Spencer. So please jump right in and tell us more about who you are and what you do. Well, thank you. Um, so as, as Samia said, I'm Spencer Jones. The People call me the Prince of Positivity. Uh, I guess I must be positive in some way, shape or form. But um, I love helping people have a positive, abundant mindset to help them master their energy sovereignty so they could shine bright. I personally believe we all have this gorgeous light inside of us that's just aching to shine. And yet we, we have these walls, this armor up, these things that dim our light, or I should say not dim it, but don't allow it to shine as bright as it could out to the world. So um, I'm on a mission to help people dissolve those walls and remove it, not just me personally uh, through coaching and that, but we created a whole organization, a whole community around it where we have a community of people I'm experts and coaches to help people. We have an online academy. We do live events to really help people uh, take down those walls and remove that armor so that they can shine bright, learn how they could vanquish our energy vampires, plug into the infinite energy and shine their true gorgeous light with the world. And it's so amazing when when you do that, when you see people do that. And if you can help it, Oh my gosh, it's it's incredible. So that's me in a nutshell. I just love helping people shine their light. I love it. I love it. And you know, it is uh, so true, you know, that, that analogy or that idea of we, in so many ways, we literally are energy and we are light. And there are things that can prevent us from uh, shining as brightly, um, you know, or dim our light, as it were. Um, Can you tell me a little bit more about your journey, your story of how you came to be the Prince of Positivity? Hey, thanks for tuning into this episode. Hope you're getting value out of it. For your information, This episode has been sponsored by the Happiness 101 program. Are you a change maker, coach, trainer, or healer? Are chains of fear holding you back from making the impact and income you desire? Using a unique combination of positive psychology and the spiritual wisdom of our most effective change makers, the Happiness 101 program helps you break through your limiting beliefs and manifest the abundance and success you desire with fun and ease. Interested? Book a free Happiness 101 exploration call with me, your happiness expert, Samia Vano. Just use my online calendar link in the show notes. Now back to the show. 
Uh, uh, definitely. I was not always the Prince of Positivity. Um, I might have had more of an optimistic view, you know, the, the cup is half full kind of mindset throughout most of my life. But uh, I let life kind of lead me emotionally uh, on a roller coaster, you know, and and maybe you've experienced this or, or the people listening or viewing have where all of a sudden you're having a great day, you know, you woke up on the right side of bed, things are going like, life is amazing. This is great. And then other days when something's not going well and you're like, life sucks. And it's just, uh, you're struggling, your your inner critic is really beating you up. And it was this roller coaster of emotions constantly. Well, before I was a Prince of Positivity, um, the nickname that my wife gave me before we met, uh, we went to the same college and we met in college. It was a small university and she saw me walking a lot and ac accurately named. The nickname she gave me was Ego Man uh, because I had this big ego. I was loud. I was obnoxious. I let my ego do a lot of the leading for the majority of my life, 30 plus years, and I'm 36 currently. So for 30, just over 30 years of my life, I let the ego guide me of saying, hey, look at me, I'm awesome, look what I can do. And just, I tried to live up to what I thought society wanted to see from me, right? That, oh, I needed to to have this, this amount of money, this kind of car, this whatever, and let that make decisions. Now, I became a middle school, high school choir director not necessarily making the big bucks, but making an impact with kids. And then, and even though we did really cool things, they had the not great intentions behind it, right? So yes, while we, we raised thousands of dollars for a variety of charities and, and groups and organizations and causes, that it was for a different reason. It was, yes, I was able to help, but I was also going to say, hey, look at me, look what I can do, I'm, I'm really awesome. Well, the issue with that is I let the ego make these choices. and. I don't know about you, but if you've experienced this, uh, I think most of us have to some degree that as we as we go through life and we let our ego make those decisions, it's putting us up on these pedestals. Well, life then will knock out that pedestal mm -hmm. from underneath you to a degree. And it did that, right? Life checked me, quote unquote, and knocked me down a little bit. But me being ego, man, I just blew it off. I'm like, I got this, like, no, no, I'll come back stronger. Look at this, that was nothing, right? Let's keep going. And I usually doubled down and kept going. And I did that over and over and again. Well, just like uh, if, if you're going through life and you're like, oh, I got the sniffles a little bit, but I'm not going to take time off for me to, to feel better, you're going to get sick, right? Well, life kept checking me and I kept ignoring it and just doubling down and, and letting my ego drive until it really kicked the pedestal out from underneath me. My ego led me and I allowed it to make stupid choices in my life, choices that hurt me and even more importantly hurt the people I love and care about, that it life kicked that pedestal out and I came crashing down. And as opposed to just a little bit of fall that I had before, it was a total fall. I think of it like a, a wrecking ball came in and all of the walls, all of the armor I built up over years because I didn't I'll be honest, I didn't know who I really was. I was doing personal growth and development at the time, but I never let it sink in because I never, I I just, I didn't even know who I was. I, I buried it under so many walls and armor that I didn't even want to take a look. And what happened is when life kicked that pedestal out, I came crashing down hard. It obliterated all of the walls, all of the armor. And I, I literally felt cold. I felt tired. I felt alone. And I wasn't alone. Thankfully, I had my beautiful wife with me and for a, a small handful of friends who were able to help and guide me. And uh, But I, I still felt cold, alone, and tired. So from there, I went, okay, I know I have their support. I started seeing a therapist and I was already doing personal growth. But what I realized is I didn't let it sink in deep enough to the real me. And thankfully, I had some tools and strategies that I knew about that I started implementing right away gratitudes, affirmations, journaling, things like that, to keep going. And the therapist then offered more tools and strategies to help me and help rebuild from this, this foundation, right? The rock bottom sucks. It, it's mm. hard hitting it. But what's great about rock bottom is that's where you can build that strong foundation and, and build up from there. And so that's what I started to do is I realized, first of all, I, I literally hated who I was, who I became and said, okay, I don't like that person. Let's 
quote unquote kill off that person, that old Spencer ego man. And let's rebuild someone who's in alignment with his energy, with that love. And from there blossomed the Prince of Positivity, I suppose. Uh, and where I've been through the fire, I've worked on myself and learned how to create those positive neural pathways and to not have a roller coaster of a day like it used to. I'm like, oh, I can I can master my energy sovereignty. So yeah, I'll still have high days and, and bad days, you know, the peaks and valleys, but they're not as drastic and they're not as far between. The highs are so incredibly high, but the lows aren't as, as bad. And I, I can manage that. And oh my gosh, how incredible this is. And then that allows me to shine my light. And as we go on this journey of life, I realize, oh, I, I still have a couple of these walls up or these limiting beliefs, these energy vampires that are holding me back. I'm like, oh, isn't that interesting? And then I work at dissolving them and letting them go so I can continue to shine bright and impact life. So it's been a really interesting journey. Um, I've retired from teaching in the classroom, the middle school, high school choir director position I had three years ago, went full time uh, as an entrepreneur to really make this a worldwide movement. And we've been able to grow this around the world. And uh, we've helped thousands of people so far. And we're looking forward to helping um, a billion is our, our big goal, a billion people around the world raise their vibrations to have a positive abundant mindset and shine their light that's amazing thank you so much for sharing that journey and just in that context you brought up so many um like nuggets of wisdom that you shared that you could like just dig into and you know, you reminded me one of the first thoughts um, when you were talking about um, how your wife called you the ego man. And then it made me think about the um, uh, saying, pride comes before fall. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have like so many teachings about pride and ego and the role that it plays in terms of the challenges that crop up in our lives and in our relationships there is actually this um, story in the quran which is you know the holy scripture for us muslims and in this story it, it's sort of like um, a lot of our listeners may be uh, familiar with the creation story in the bible creation of Adam and Eve well the Quran has a variation on that story and actually it adds this character um, uh, that um, uh, is sort of like um, it's not it's not a human person it's like another being another kind of being and uh, it's called um, well, he has a name. His personal name is Iblis. And when God creates Adam and Eve, Iblis is like really jealous of Adam and Eve. His ego kicks in, his pride kicks in. He's like, Adam and Eve are made out of clay. <laughs> and that is like such a lowly thing. And I've been made out of fire. I'm so much more amazing. <laughs> And uh, why is God, you know, showing all this favor to Adam and Eve and out of pride, uh, you know, and jealousy, he actually um, tries to um, uh, mess up things for Adam and Eve. Uh, you know, the, the, that's the part where, you know, they get tempted to eat the forbidden fruit and so forth. And... Um, but it's, it doesn't just cause the downfall of Adam and Eve and they do fall in for that temptation. It actually also causes the fall for Iblis. He also gets kicked out of um, heaven as it were, or you know, wherever. It is that they were all hanging out. And um, in, in, the, in the Muslim version of the creation story, actually, this uh, whole temptation thing and this whole pride um, and ego that led Iblis to sort of uh, get into this whole conundrum is actually considered the first 
um, sin that was ever committed, um, mm-hmm. as opposed to Adam and Eve who fell into temptation because first they had this other person, not person, but creature or whatever, Being, right? Something, he, yeah. you know, like get all these negative emotions rising up and then being like no you know i'm not i'm not going to let them be i'm <laughs> i'm going to create their downfalls so actually that ill intention and then him acting on it um that was actually the first problem Interesting. yeah <laughs> it, it's amazing how I, i've never i've never heard that a variation of it before but i love it and i it makes total sense it it's amazing to me how pride of that ego you know of of trying to be like why them not me right that judgment style um it it comes so naturally to us uh as as humans and as beings right my and people can disagree with me and that that's beautiful I, I love it but the way i kind of look at it is we are these energy beings having this human experience so adam and eve are energy beings who get to have this cool experience and you know the tempter however you know whoever that is the energy being right but why is that pride and uh ego is there and just to work at letting that go so like mm. for me it's always been, it's been a journey now of especially since I let my ego guide me for for so much of my life now I, I'm really mindful of it and uh, I'm totally taking this on a side tangent that that you didn't ask about but um for me it, I was so afraid after I hit my rock bottom um my ego was running wild right it was just it was running the show and I, I didn't feel like I had any reins or control on it it was just doing whatever it wanted to do all the pride and all uh, and ego just running the, the show and so for me, what happened once I hit my rock bottom is I was so afraid to step into any big role, to, to embrace my light even to a degree and be called the Prince of Positivity. Even then, like tiptoe into it because I wasn't sure because I was afraid of, oh crap, well, what if my ego comes back and mm-hmm. I can't control it? I can't, like, it's like a wild beast that I, I'm not able to tame at all. Uh, I was so afraid of that. And what that led me to do is led me to uh, have people in my life. Uh, I have like three people that I have as um, checks and balances, I guess, in place. Like they, they will, they are there to tell me, hey, this is your ego talking or check that, watch out. And they're like, nope, we got you, but step into it because you're not serving uh, the people you can, you're, you're not helping the leaders that you can because you're not stepping into your full light because I was so afraid and timid of it. So once I said, all right, I have these people who are willing to help and support me. I have my own personal checks and balances in place to check things. Now let me step into that. And even so much, I was telling my wife uh, last night, I went to an event two days ago and it wasn't anything big. I just, I, I said a couple of things that were nice and answering questions and whatever, but it was still... It was a little maybe boastful, right? I don't think it came across that way. At least that wasn't the intention behind it. But upon reflection, as I was uh, working out yesterday morning, thinking about that two days ago, I'm like, huh, isn't that interesting? I don't, I hope it didn't come across as boastful, but I could see how that was my ego trying to get like, oh, let me play a little bit. Let me do this. I'm like, hmm, how cool is it now that I have the awareness that I didn't have before to go, oh, that happened well now let me be more aware of that and see what can i do or change or adjust if i choose to which i choose to because i don't want my ego to run any part of it um to to adjust for the future so it's it's just an interesting journey when and when you have the people or systems in place to help you then you can fully step into your light and it's it's really energizing at that point yes yes and thank you so much for highlighting the fear factor that lies um, or that can crop up. I, I think, you know, even I, I can actually relate to what you're sharing in terms of my own experience also. I mean, I, I mean, in a, from a sort of different context and for different reasons, I, I had developed, you know, in my, um, in my life, like this need to sort of feel 
and power and control. And, you know, like for me, a lot of that um, led me to develop an ego or at least try to act like, uh, like there was definitely lots of underlying fear for me, like throughout. Mm. But the way I tried to compensate for that was by being like, no, me, I'm important and I am right. And, you know, I um, like try to puff myself up to compensate for the fear and to try and um, make myself feel better. But the underlying fear never left. And that's like when I hit my rock bottom and my walls came crashing down, the walls I had put up to um, protect myself, you know, the, the fear was still there, you know. And so even when I was working my way back up uh, out of the hole, uh, that fear interestingly uh you know it also like for me manifested in this context that you were sharing spencer of uh, my becoming afraid of my own power and being afraid of you know misusing my power or my light um because it was like it, it's so interesting that first you know you like try i, I I, I tried to, um, you know, build up that sense of power and, uh, but turns out that the way that my ego was trying to convince me I was powerful were all really shallow ways. Mm -hmm. And when you really start to dig in and grow yourself from a more positive place, you also begin to recognize power that you have and that's not shallow power you know it it's like you know when you start to recognize how you're an energy being your spiritual being and you have like so much um positivity that is you know inherently you um and then, you know, you don't want to fall into that same trap of the ego. So it, it is a very interesting, uh, you know, fear how in terms of you maybe sometimes um, play small or dim your light because you're, you're like, oh, no, I don't want to be egoistic. I don't want to be boastful. <laughs> Right. You, you play it down. And then yet. So so people take it as you're really humble and, and you are, but also you're not owning your power. So it's it's almost like this fine balance of like, OK, I'm going to own the fact that I'm really good with this thing or whatever that is. This is my light and I'm embracing and I'm sharing it, but I'm not not trying to boast about it. And so for me, the, the, the way I check into it is like, am I saying it as a way of, hey, look at me. I'm, I'm really cool, or this is me, or look at that. That's the boastful, that's the ego, that, that pride energy, as opposed to, I'm just sharing my light, this is me, I'm positive, I'm happy. These are the cool things we're doing that can support and help you, as long as it's supporting, loving, you know, it's out of, like I always say, respond with love. If it's in a response with love, in some way, shape, or form, great, then, then that's not the ego. And again, I, I reflect daily. I have, uh, you know, people who help as well and and just make sure that those things are in place. But the fear that you mentioned, we all, I think all of us have fear, whether we choose to admit it or not. And it's hard because at points you want to take that leap of faith. You want to say, all right, I'm going to build that confidence up to say, fear, I'm, I'm done with you, are going to step over you. We're going to take that leap of faith and, and go for that. But, and, and sometimes you have to build yourself up, right? To do that, that like, oh, I got this, yeah, well, let's go. And that's still okay, because it helps you take that leap of faith. But uh, so at times we need to do that. But I would also suggest is folks to look at that fear. Why are you afraid of it? And as scary as it is at times, to peel the layers away, right? Follow that thread down. What is that underlying cause of that fear? Mm -hmm. Is it 
and now, okay, not to be the, the psychologist or, you know, psychotherapist here, but it probably stems from something in your childhood to a degree, not always, but because in our formative years in between, uh, if I remember right, it's uh, between four and seven, eight, that's when our, it's right in there, it's under 10. And I want to say it's like four to seven, four to eight, that our brains start to create all those neural pathways, all those limiting beliefs of things we hear and are told within those couple years, that's when all of those uh, neural pathways get built for us. So now we can work at change them and adjust them, but as kids, we don't think about it. It just is what that is for us. As teenagers, we're going through hormones and all that, that we don't usually work on those things, not many at least. And then as adults, now we have to start, we, we're more aware and we start dealing with it. So peel back those layers and say, oh, like for me, I did not feel worthy. I did not feel enough. And I could see that when I started pulling that thread, and I love my parents, They're, they did the best that they could for me, I appreciate that, but they raised me with a lot of guilt. That's how they ran their household was through guilt. And I still struggle with guilt, uh, but I've gotten a lot better. But I still something I work through. But when I followed that thread, I'm like, oh, I could see at these different points in my life where the actions and things that my parents said to me and how I took it, whether that's how they intended or not, that's how my brain took it at that time, where, oh, I didn't feel worthy because I felt like I had to prove myself over and over again. I, I must not be enough because I need to show my worth or prove that I'm capable or able to whatever over and over again. And so that built that neural pathway. So that led me my whole life uh, of 30 years uh, to go, oh, I need to prove myself. No, more. And mm -hmm. so then when I saw that and had that realization, I can look at my ego and go, oh, though, that's why the, I made those decisions why ego was leading me that way is because I was trying to show, oh, look, I am worthy. Oh, look how much I can make. Oh, look at much of the impact I can do. Because I was just trying to, to fill that void, you know, to fire up that neural pathway and fill that void inside. But it was a bottomless pit. It wasn't until I, I got rid of it, filled it in totally by knowing and fully admitting, embracing that fear and saying, no, that, that came from them. And, and at that point in my life, uh, and so now, you know what? I am enough. I am worthy. That's an affirmation I say all the time. And anytime I'm on a podcast or show or anything, I always tell people because I need to hear myself and other people need to hear it as well. You are amazing. You are worthy. You are enough just the way you are. And the reason I say that, it's, it's true. It's true for everyone. And I need to hear that reminder because I still struggle at times feeling like I'm not worthy and not enough. Uh, so I, I say that to help me heal that and fill that void because the one once I did, I, I was energized beyond belief. I was like, oh my gosh, I have this clarity and I, I could step into my light and not worry. I could be me. And all of a sudden that bottomless pit, that void I felt inside that black hole was mm -hmm. gone and it was filled with this bright, beautiful love. And I mean, it, it, life changing. Yes, that is so true. That is so true. You know, I think, um, what what Iblis did, what I did, what you did in terms of when we let our egos rule was we, we were really trying to feel enough. We were trying to feel worthy. And, um, and it's just that the way we went around trying to deal with the fear of not being worthy was we tried to compare ourselves to others and put ourselves up in comparison to someone else and um that made things difficult because the when we compare ourselves to others you know i think as much as we may try to um, put others down so we can by comparison feel better i think there's you know a part of us that realizes that recognizes that actually other people are awesome and have all kinds of amazing strengths and amazing light and so we're never able to feel fully satisfied with the conclusions of our own ego right we're <laughs> never continue to be insecure 
Right, exactly. We, we're trying to judge others and all we do in judging and comparing is saying, I'm, yeah, we put people on a scale. I'm better than you are, you are better than I am. Yeah. And the truth of the matter, uh, the fact is that we are all the same. We are all even. We all might make different choices and different things and some that we agree with morally or not or whatever society, but we're all the same. Energetically, we're all the same. Let's let's be on that same field. And, you know, I've, I've made stupid mistakes. I made stupid choices in my life. And am I going to let those define me and give me labels? No, because I, I'm learning from them. And it's like, all right, I take those lessons with me. I'm going to release the guilt, the shame, the worry, all of that stuff with them. And I'm going to take those lessons and move forward because you know what? Now I, I'm shining brighter and I, I was able to learn and grow through that. So now I can help other people yeah. do that as well. So let's, let's drop the whole judgment in comparison. Like that's one, one thing I love about our Energizer family that we've created is, is it's a safe place. It's a place where there's zero judgment. And I mean, let's be honest, we do our best not to judge, right? It's part of what we do to our bodies do to keep us alive, right? We need to judge. Oh my gosh, that cheetah's running at me very fast. I better move, right? Or I'm standing at the edge of a cliff. This could be dangerous, right? Let me be aware. So yes, that stuff's watching out for you. But for a lot of the things in our life of the judging, it, it's not serving us at all. And you're going to be okay. So let's stop judging each other. Let's put each other on the same playing field and be like, hey, let's just see. I might resonate with you. And if we do, great. If we don't, hey, that's okay. You're still cool. You're still awesome. You're just not my person. And that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in terms of building up our true power, our, like focus on yourself, focus on your own light and uh, sort of dig comfort from that uh and not just comfort but the motivation the excitement the the trust and faith in yourself that you are enough and amazing and all that uh good stuff and uh you you mentioned again you know this idea of energy and um i remember earlier on you also mentioned the idea of energy sovereignty tell me more about that um it's a it's a term that we coined a couple months ago almost a year ago now energy sovereignty so we all know what the energy is the vibration of everything energy and then sovereignty being the the king the queen the master of your kingdom as it were so what would happen if you can master your energy and, and your energy sovereignty, right? So be the master of it, the king, the queen, however you want to look at it. So the way, I, the way I look at it is we all have this beautiful light inside of us, right? That's shining out to the rest of the world and we put up these walls and armor and stuff that we try to dissolve and work through. But it's also the energy flow in and out. Right. I talked earlier about the roller coaster of days I used to have. Right. Today was a good day. Yay. Things happened really well. Today was a crap day because there's bad things. I was letting everything and anything be poured into me. Mm. The good energy, the bad energy, all of it. And I had no control over it. There was no funnel. It was just in. And then I let let things go, whether it was good, whether it was bad, whether it was intentional for me or other people were sucking it away. The energy vampires, people, places or things sucking it away. So uh, once I realized, I started really learning and digging into personal growth, um, positive mindset, and really energy management uh, for people, I'm like, I, I, I realized, oh, I, I know I've been able to master parts of my day, part of my energy, but what if I could be the master of it all and have this energy sovereignty? So I tried, I, I tried defining it, right? Let, let, let me give you an Oxford Dictionary definition of energy sovereignty. And I couldn't, like I, I've tried and tried and I couldn't give a definition because it's, it's something you can't overly define with words like that. It's something you experience. So the way I could describe it or define it is when you have energy sovereignty, when you're the master of it, it feels like you are whole, like you're complete, uh, you're, you're loved, you're energized, you're fulfilled. It's almost like you're, you're one with God. If you've ever had a point in your life when you're like, oh my gosh, I feel so connected to God, to source, to earth, wind, fire, whatever you choose to call it. 
when you feel that connected, that's kind of what energy sovereignty is. It's mm -hmm. that feeling of I'm whole, I'm complete, I'm fulfilled. And so, and it looks like a person who feels loved, who's generous, who's kind, who's happy, who's filled with joy, right? We can be going through a rough time, but we still have joy in our hearts. It's not like, it's not false positivity or it's not toxic positivity. Everything's sunshine, rainbows, and unicorns. It's not that, right? There's still hardships, there's still struggles that we all go through, but we, we still feel that joy when we still work through it and see the, the lessons uh, that, that we can take away. So energy sovereignty is this feeling of being fulfilled, of wholeness, of completeness, and then just allowing your light to shine. So that's kind of what it is. And we've, we've worked at, we've discovered how to master it, right? Master, and it really comes down to the, the energy flow. How can you curate the energy coming in, right? So you're surrounding yourself with amazing people, uh, places and things, things that pour love and light into you, you're filling your cup, as it were. And so I, I like the idea of the, the cup analogy, like, okay, let me pour into you. But instead of me pouring from just a cup, my cup is always overflowing because I'm being, I intentionally have things pour into me, not just willy nilly or random. I'm intentional about the things that pour into me. And then where's my energy going? I'm intentional about who gets my energy, where it goes, like being on this podcast is an intentional choice. Now I want to make sure my energy is being poured into you and to hear and to have your energy poured into my cup. Right. Um, but then there's also these energy vampires, the people who, you know, you ever be around and all of a sudden you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm so exhausted. Or I, I get angry or frustrated or sad when I'm around them, right? They're sucking your energy away. And that's a lot of times we think of people, but their organizations, places, things work, things like that. But also one thing that a lot of people don't realize uh, as an energy vampire are your, are your thoughts. Mm -hmm. The thoughts you're thinking, the words you're saying to other people and to yourself, because we t we all talk to ourselves silently or out loud. And all of those things have that energy level. So they could be sucking your energy away, the limiting beliefs you have. Those are energy vampires that are sucking your energy away. Well, let's let's mitigate that. Let's change it. See how we can do that with limiting beliefs, organizations, places, people, things, all of that so that we can master our energy sovereignty. So now we're not being drained unintentionally. I could still pour into something that drains me, but it's an intentional choice at that point. So now we could be the master and have a uh, master, master of our energy sovereignty, feel fulfilled, and then continue to shine because then that allows us to shine bright and to pour into others to help them shine bright. Yeah, yeah. You know what you're saying makes a lot of sense to me. And in fact, you know, one thing that I've been discovering on my own journey is the more you become master of your own energy um it's like the energy vampires actually become helpless mm -hmm. uh, you know and it's i'm not saying i'm perfect at it by no means i no one is actually, no one know. is not even the dalai lama no no not perfect at it not perfect but it is something for us to recognize uh in terms of you know uh what's what is possible that we can strive for um you know that you can potentially we have that potential to reach that um state where uh you know we are in fact so much in uh, the state of energy sovereignty that there can that you know anyone and anything else that has the potential to be an energy vampire just I mean it, it, you know they're nonetheless not actually able to to uh, they may want to suck energy off of me but they can't right but they can't because I'm in control of my energy as exactly exactly you're in control and, and yeah. I mean the hard realization for a lot of people and this was a hard one for me to to really embrace is the fact that no I'm I am already the master of my energy but I'm not mastering it I'm letting it go everywhere and anywhere and they're sucking it away when I'm allowing it I'm allowing them to suck my energy away I'm allowing this whatever to be poured into me or whatever so i'm already the quote unquote the master of it but now it's being 
mastering being the master, right? So yeah. that, oh, now if I have that energy sovereignty, they don't have any power over me because I choose not to let them. If, if they have some power, you know, if they're sucking energy away from me, I'm giving them that power. I'm allowing them to have it. Now, maybe I don't want that. And that's something I need to work through and, and uh, improve on. Okay, right. We all have things to work on. I'm, I'm not perfect either by any means. I, I work through it. But but then we have that awareness we could start uh, working through. And that's that's what we, we do, right? So that's what our community is about, our academy is about, our events. Like we just, we love helping people master it and then be poured into it lots of love and light mm -hmm. yes and i love the community aspect that you brought up because whatever i'm able to do on my own as an individual um, it'll always be so limited and it's so important for us to have that community that support because we really um you know, we've been talking about energy and vampires, but the truth is that, uh, you know, we do feed off of each other's energy. Uh, we are impacted by each other's energy. So it's not just, oh, negative energy impacts us, but it's when you are around uh, positive energy that also impacts us and and just makes it easier, you know, for us to 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 be positive and to be more positive with more fun and ease than if you're struggling with with things on your own and it's the same thing with like um other aspects of let's say a, a positive environment it's like why do you want to be in a beautiful place with trees and nature or you know beautiful art and things like that is that necessary for your happiness it's not necessary, but it's a whole lot easier. Right? I mean, uh, that beautiful place, yeah. it's a lot easier to yeah. absorb that positive uh, energy, the high vibrations. Yes, because it's like if you're in a place with negative vibration, then you may have to put in more effort uh, to counteract that negativity. I mean, I remember... Uh, when I was in uh, college, uh, we were doing, I was part of this organization where we went to volunteer to um, mentor and do like peer counseling and tutoring for high school students in a part of Los Angeles that's uh, very uh, like, in, uh, unfortunately not it does not have a lot of uh, positive environment there's a lot of issues with gang violence and you go there and it's like a concrete jungle you can hardly see a tree anywhere um, you know and there's just uh, when we were in the school in the high school you know you felt like you were in a prison uh, like everything was like closed off there was so much security that they made you like um, go through you could hear gunshots outside um, you know and that kind of environment and you know so when you're there it, it, it just creates there there's so many potential you know stressors that can be created because of that kind of an environment that you can counteract all of that and being you know in control of your own energy you can choose to focus on the positive things you can focus on making things better rather than focusing on what's wrong etc etc but you know then you have to sort of work at it and uh, you know and you have to consciously be aware of how these different things are impacting you because I think one of the things we don't realize is when when something is negatively impacting us I, I remember this was also back in college right after 9-11 uh, we had um, uh, you know um, the the uh, 
the uh, like for uh, there was this event organized that was Uh, meant to bring our whole college community together to to talk about oh, 9/11 what happened how do we deal with it how do we cope with it and one of the speakers at the event was actually a, ther- a psychologist from our um psycho- uh, uh, from our health center and she started talking about stress and the symptoms of stress and and until i heard her talk about oh stress can look like this and uh, you know uh, it can feel like that i didn't even realize i was feeling stress right those days i didn't even realize it and i think so many people out there don't even realize how much stress they're experiencing and how much stress they're under um and they're just like going through life going through life not even realizing so um yeah and it, it's like if you don't even realize what the problem is like when i didn't even realize i was stressed how could i even begin to implement any kind of effective solution you know right you can't you can't fix or change anything unless you are aware of it and what the the speaker did for you is made you aware oh i didn't realize stress could look like this or it embodies itself like this and i'm like oh my gosh i i see now how i was stressed or how i was my, the stress was working its way through me or how i was whatever like how it was affecting you and that's that's huge because then you're like oh okay cool i'm aware that i'm stressed now what do i do about it and to tie it back to what you mentioned earlier with community that's the an amazing thing about community because then you are there to support one another uh as you said that the environments you're in like be intentional about who and what you surround yourself in now we can't always have that perfect location sometimes it is that the 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 harder place a more negative environment okay then then we do the best we can we still focus on the positives and look at that and then we try to intentionally move ourselves into places whether it's a virtual space or in person space that has more positive energy but surrounding yourself with that community like um, our energy hub group on facebook the free group we have well great now you're surrounded by positivity we we energize your scroll as it were by filling it with positivity so now when you go on facebook oh my gosh instead of all the negatives and and frustration now it's positives and and jokes and things that help you and then if you need help you reach out and then you have people pour into you and you can pour into others having that virtually is great and then if you can start building that people around you in person even better yet and so now we just continue that to grow and making those moves and it's not it's not a one night thing like all right to tomorrow I'm going to do this and all of a sudden it's there it takes time and and takes energy it takes work right as you said it takes work to do it but the work is worth it because you feel fulfilled you feel alive you feel energized and when you're surrounding yourself with those amazing people it makes it easier to keep shifting to keep moving to go through those hard times to do the hard work because it is hard work at times um usually it's not necessarily hard as in like physical work to do it's hard emotionally spiritually mentally to go through at times not always but then to work through it, but then you have a support system and that's that makes such a big difference and but first you need the awareness and yeah. then the tools to do it and, and the and then to do the work and then when you have support and are in a a, a positive environment that makes it a, a lot easier to yeah. continue that journey and to accelerate your growth yes because you know even when we feel the work is hard you know the very idea of hard that's what it is it's an idea it's a perspective and um you know uh part of you know developing energy sovereignty is like you were saying watching our own thoughts and our own limiting beliefs and um you know when something is feeling hard to us there is there is a it's not like 
we're just making making it up and that thought or feeling has no basis in reality that's not it but it's about how do you shift into a perspective and into a way of doing things where it's more fun and easy you know and so for sure for sure having a community to support you in that process but also model for you as you were saying spencer <clears throat> um you know is part of what allows us to create that shift that we need and that we are seeking and we can do it so much more easy because I think also we don't um, realize that we are such inherently social creatures. You know, we are not meant, we're not designed to function isolated and all by ourselves. And so part of when things feel hard to us, it's because we are not as connected as we can be to our environment, to our relationships. Um, and, and we need that. We really do. So, um, it's, um, it's really awesome. I'm so glad that, you know, you have that kind of community going. I know like that's part of what I'm trying to do also in my work is build that sense of community. And, um, like for me, you're so right like social media especially um can be such um energy vampire it really can and it's interesting um like there's now so many studies that show how negatively it impacts people's mental health especially for our younger people uh, mm-hmm. you know because again they have less tools they're still trying to figure things out and about life and how to manage things and so they get even more easily sucked in right well, and, it, and it promotes yeah. comparison and judgment like we talked about exactly. before exactly right yeah. and so to to create a space yeah. uh, on social media that is judgment free that has that love and support where you can be yes. you and allow yourself to be you without that judgment it's that's huge and uh, it yeah. is amazing the studies that come out and i i know we won't be able to change the studies and that's that's fine but i want to create a dent in it and, and create a space where people you know can can go to feel loved cared about and even just connect and even if they don't comment or post anything in the group they just see the the other people in their posts and and feel like they're part of the community that's that's huge and so it's it's such an honor to be able to have that space for people yeah and we absolutely can uh, make a dent in that whole thing i mean you know at this point my social media feeds if you look at them uh, they're so full of because i consciously um you know chose to like and engage with you know the uplifting positive content uh that now my feed's full of it thanks to people like you it's amazing (laughs) a little bit of my own effort right right it's amazing how you curate your feed um (laughs) i mean the way i i kind of describe it is and life is like social media on social media you can curate your feed and i've done the same thing it was full of gossip and and anger and hatred and all that stuff before right uh, of just the usual feed but then i started curating i started uh unfriending or not following the things that were filled with gossip and negativity started liking and following the things that more resonate with me the positives the uplifting things and it was really intentional about I'm not going to follow this person. I'm going to follow this or do this or, and just curate my feed. So now my whole feed, almost all of it, and some stuff sneaks in, but almost all of it is positive. It's uplifting. It's people doing incredible things. And it's so amazing. Now when I open up Facebook or any of my social media uh, apps, I go, oh my gosh, this is, it's enlightening. It's invigorating. It's energizing because I curated my feed. And life has that same algorithm. That's social media. Social media, if you focus on something right they, they see how long you take to, and watch a, a video whether it's positive or negative or stay on a post they see that because they want you to stay on that platform as long as possible so it says oh they spent longer on this i mean we're going to show them more of that 
So it adjusts their algorithm to keep you on. Well, life has the same thing. So if you're focused on negatives and the, the problems, the struggles, the judgments in life, life goes, okay. And your brain goes, okay, this is what we want to see. So I'm going to see this more and more and more. And that, then you're like, oh my gosh, life sucks. It's all filled with anger and hatred and judgment, da, 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 da. Or you can go, all right, let me focus on my gratitudes. What are the amazing things, the positives in life, the good things we have going on and, and look for those positives, no matter how small or how big they are. Life goes and your brain goes, oh my gosh, we're liking this. This is great. Let's find more of it. So then it finds more positives, more gratitudes, more incredible things yes. in, your, in your life. And then it brings more to you because it's not so much that it brings more to you. You're just more aware of it. Mm -hmm. And then then more starts to come your way. And it's, it's yeah. a, a snowball effect. And it's a truly amazing. Yes, indeed. You just reminded me of uh, one of my teachers, uh, his favorite saying, it's what you focus on expands. Yes. Focus on expands. So, so true. Yeah. Ah. Mm. You know, Spencer, <laughs> I totally lost track of time talking to you. I've been having so much fun and I think we might need to bring you back so we can keep talking and wrap up for today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would love it. This has been an absolute blast time flew by uh, mm -hmm. uh, for me and I, I hope for the listeners as well. And just thank you so much for having me on and, and talk about stuff I love just energy sovereignty and uh, just positivity everything and uh, if you want me back i'd be more than happy to be here i love our conversation and just i'm so honored so thank you so much right. thank you spencer um do you have anything you want to share with people in terms of how they can best get in touch with you we'll be sure to drop any links that you want to share with the audience in our show notes thank you um, well, could, could I, can I give something away? Can yes. I do that out loud? I forgot to ask, so I, hopefully it's okay. So, um, I would love to offer everyone a free membership if they're interested to our, uh, personal growth Academy. So it's an online Academy I talked about where you, you'll get access for the free access. You'll get like over 10 trainings and courses, absolutely free. If you want all about personal growth. So uh, to get that, all you have to do do is go to jonesen academycom and so and sign up for the apprentice membership so it's jonesen j-o-n-e-s-i-n-f-o-r academy like you're jonesen for more positivity right you want more you're jonesen for it so you're jonesen for academy uh dot com sign up for the apprentice would love to do that and for all of the amazing listeners here if you after you join us and you say hey i heard you on um, the Make Change Fun and Easy podcast, let me know and I will throw in an extra training just for you. So this has been such an honor, amazing. I'll leave you with this. And as I said it earlier, remember that you, yes, you, you are amazing. You are worthy. You are enough just the way you are. So keep shining your beautiful light. Thank you. Thank you so much, Spencer. And yes, everyone, all of you who are listening, Please make sure you check the show notes. We'll be sure to drop those um, links. And thank you so much, Spencer, for uh, giving us that gift. And I really, really do appreciate everything that you've shared with us. Thank you for sharing your time, your positivity, your energy. And until we connect next time, I just wish you lots and lots of peace and joy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Same to you.